come back to, to southeast Colorado, and that's where my wife had uh, been born and raised, and, and her family's uh, op uh, farming operation was a going concern. And, and so I had an opportunity to start uh, uh, a couple years after we came back to Lamar uh, to start uh, managing uh, the family operation. And, and so one thing led to another, and, and we expanded that operation to what it is uh, uh, today. Uh, the biggest, uh, I think, differences I saw in southeast Colorado is it's even drier than northeastern Colorado, and uh, and so water is even more appreciated uh, in, in a lot of ways, and and, and even more scarce in, in a lot of ways. Because as I left northeastern Colorado, my father was developing uh, center pivot irrigation uh, from Ogallala and had abundant water at that time. That's not the case uh, uh, now, 45, 50 years later, but uh, in the uh, in the Arkansas Valley, uh, uh, quite dependent on uh, uh, the flow of the river, the snowpack, uh, what comes downstream. Uh, also, uh, our operation there was primarily dry land operations, so we uh, depended on what fell out of the sky, uh, uh, snow in the winter and, and, and rain in the spring and summer. And, and so uh, I always had a great appreciation in making water go as far as we could, whether we were summer fallowing or uh, planting crops that uh, were uh, more adaptable. Uh, and, and so I, I think where I got my first experience uh, in policy uh, with water uh, in southeast Colorado was I was appointed as a county commissioner. The Arkansas Valley is well aware of what happened in Crowley County uh, with the uh, dry up and losing over 90 percent of that water that went elsewhere and what it did to the economy, what it did to the environment. And so we were uh, uh, committed to, to find alternatives. And so we worked with the state, we worked with uh, a lot of people on trying to uh, establish a state park type of system, water-based uh, uh, in, in southeastern Colorado. And, and, and so that gave me some of my first exposure to the politics, you might say, of, of, of water and, and, and the issues around it and, and uh, the efforts uh, of moving water from ag uh, to uh, non-ag uh, purposes. One thing led to another, and then uh, as I uh, kind of transitioned out of the uh, uh, county commissioner, uh, I had the opportunity to meet uh, Bill Ritter. And Bill Ritter was a candidate running uh, for governor, and he wanted to see uh, some renewable energy. And we were fortunate uh, that uh, one of our farms had three wind turbines on it from the city of Lamar. Uh, utility board. With this candidate, I had the opportunity to spend several hours with him, first time I met him, and we talked about renewable energy and the relationship to agriculture, and so I had an opportunity then one-on-one -on -one to quiz him on, you know, uh, who was going to be providing ag policy and, uh, and advice uh, to his administration, and out of that conversation, uh, he asked me to be on his transition team after he was elected, and then the transition team uh, kind of mutinied on me uh, and my other uh, co-chair uh, uh, and asked me to resign so I could be considered as a, as a commissioner of agriculture. Uh, Bill Ritter decided not to run and, and uh, John Hickenlooper decided to run. Why? I was uh, willing to give him some advice like I had uh, Ritter, you know, uh, around ag policy and, and uh, at the end of his uh, uh, formulating his cabinet he asked me to stay on not as ag commissioner but as a water policy advisor and and i kind of pushed back initially because i said you know i'm primarily a dry land uh, uh farmer and rancher uh and uh well he said i realize that but uh he said you don't have the baggage of being an irrigator from the eastern plains or from the western slope or a municipal provider uh large or small uh, I said, you, and you know water, and you know mainly how to get people together uh, to have a conversation.